What is going on everybody and welcome back to another unconventional neural networks tutorial. In this video, what we're going to be doing is going over the results from our more complex mathematical models. So up to this point, we've been using a character level sequence to sequence model to do at least addition, which we found was 100% accurate. Uh, when we did the inference testing, we noticed there was uh, some weird inconsistencies there. What was going on is what with the chatbot, we have a, an additional scoring mechanism that's like a rule-based scoring mechanism that sits on top of the uh, the output. Depending on beam width, we can we can actually have a number of outputs from the chatbot, and then we can pick which one we want to use. And that's what we were doing uh, with the addition as well. But with the scoring mechanism, one of the main things with scoring is we we tend to like longer results and we penalize shorter ones. So in the model where we were doing like five plus two or whatever, that's producing a very short re result and uh, the network was kind of being scored negatively for that. And that's why we had that inconsistency. Now we could go through and make a difference, a different inference.py. I don't really see any need. Uh, this is truly just research phase and with inference.py, you're only doing like one at a time, whereas the output dev is truly 500 or 100 out of sample tests or however many you want to have. So to me, that's that's the way to go anyways when we're just doing research. So that's the way I, I, I've just decided to keep it. But that's why we had that like strange inconsistency there with 100% accuracy and then suddenly we're finding instances where it's not. Uh, anyway, let's get into it. So the first one that we have here is the, the multiple operators. So if you, in case you forget, we can go into data and check it out. So we'll look at... Uh, Look at the from first, I, I, we don't really need to look at two. But anyways, so in this case is a subtraction, a multiplication, we got a division problem. And the reason why there's spaces here, it's, it's being tokenized, hence the character level uh, sequence sequence here. Um, anyway, all the different variants and we're ready to rumble. So I'm just going to minimize this. And a couple things, all the models, including the 100% accurate addition model, uh, the this model here, the mul multiple operators, and then finally the much more complex math uh, model, all of them I'm going to upload to Python programming in net so you can kind of play with them. I'll try to remember to upload them with the settings file so that you could run it actually. <laughs> um, but if I forget, someone remind me and I'll, I'll throw the settings into it. So this is the result, um, basically right up here, it takes me forever to scroll this page. Let me just do a tiny bit, hopefully it'll, there it goes. Um, rather than doing it via the the Python files with the output dev, what, what we did here is this time it's actually just tied into TensorBoard that, so we can track these along the way. So, so all of these charts here are over time from start to the very end of what the difference was. So obviously like with, especially like with multiplication, um, the magnitude of being wrong on multiplication is very much different than the magnitude of probably being wrong with like addition or subtraction. So we didn't want to just have a general, how, how, how absolute valued off are we um, necessarily? Like we did, this is math total difference. Like we do track that as well, but we're kind of curious really about these individually as well, just to see if they're all learning or what's going wrong. So an, an addition is one above. There's so many plots here though, that it is really, really laggy. So I don't want to scroll up, but, <laughs> but anyways, it's there. Um, and then what we have here is, so the total difference, but then also the total accuracy. So as you can see, uh, it took a little bit, then suddenly it jumps up, probably a learning rate decrease there. Um, and then eventually it just kind of leveled out it, despite learning rate uh, decreases. So, um, I just kind of stopped the model at this point. It could keep going. Maybe it was going to learn something more. I'm not really sure, but I'm actually pretty impressed with a 45% accuracy. Um, that's pretty good. <laughs> so, uh, anyways, so that's that. I, I don't really want to harp too long on, on this one because this one's not as cool to me. I'm pretty confident we could come up with some sort of model that would learn this 100%. But what I really wanted to do was try far more complex types of math than just this. Uh, because if we could solve the far more complex math with some sort of model, then that should also solve this problem. So let's move on to the far more complex uh, variant here. And let me just pull down our paper space. So close that. And I guess we'll just have to keep it this way. 
So this is the, these are like all the charts basically for the more complex one. Now let me pull up an example. Let me see if I can't find, here we go. So let me just pull up um, a test from. So, and in fact, uh, this, so I'm gonna pull up one that's not tokenized because I just, it's harder for us to read it. So I'm just gonna go into new data instead uh, test from, oh man, is it it's goofing on me, man? Come on. There it goes. <laughs> anyway. Okay. So this is, these are the types of operations now that we're trying to solve. So not only do we have multiple types of operators, we've got multiple lengths of sequences, although these are all five, interestingly enough, but this one's, there's a, at least this one's four long. Um, and so is this. Anyway, but we also have like parentheses in here and different operations in the parentheses. We've got multiple parentheses. You can see there's quite a bit of embedding going on in this one. Uh, these are cool. If we could solve this kind of math, that would be impressive. So, uh, so now that was the, that's the input basically to the model this time. And obviously the output is, or the, uh, you know, the, to file is just the answer to these, uh, which is not that interesting. Uh, it's just the right answer. This is that model after, I think we're on step like 700,000 something. It looks like it's about, you know, maybe 750,000. What are we at? 741. So 741,000 steps. And we're tracking all the same things. We're tracking the ads, the divs, the moles, the subs, and then the total difference. Now the total difference is a little hard to see and so is moles. Uh, one option we have is to try to zoom in a little bit. Um, the problem is these values were just so freaking huge that they confused the chart. Um, anyway, so you can zoom in a little bit and start to kind of get an idea of what that graph looks like. Also, the total difference one, I can try to zoom in. Sorry, it's so laggy with this thing's been up, up for so long. So anyway, you can at least get the idea. They are declining over time. The total accuracy here is a mere 1.2 percent now in the grand scheme of things uh with the fact that this is a character level sequence to sequence in theory it could be an infinite number of outputs um getting 1.2 percent accuracy is pretty exciting to me i actually didn't think that this would work at all <laughs> i didn't think it would train at all um so actually 1.2 percent i'm I'm pretty impressed. The fact too that um, the the total difference is in steady decline, and, and it's definitely learning things. Also, we we can pull up um, some of the comparisons. So I went ahead and just pulled in the some of the comparing files from before, just so that we can kind of look at what the intended output was compared to what the actual output was. So this is just a really basic file um, from one of the previous tutorials. So it's just gonna load up output dev 5000. So it's just, a, it's all 500 of them. So we can see this is after 5000 steps, how it was doing had 0% accuracy on here. Um, but interestingly enough, almost immediately, we actually see that it's not super far off like i mean well okay this one is actually pretty far off that's actually one of the worst ones i've seen to be honest usually it's at least somewhere in the right order of magnitude but actually a few of these are quite a bit off this is more along the lines of what i kind of expected the best of this model to be i just didn't i feel like i felt like this is very challenging for a neural network to be able to learn all the intricacies of how to do addition how to do division um, the parentheses and like combining all these operations that is curious to me that it's able to, to do that. Um, so, so anyway, um, so that was only 5,000 steps though. As I showed you guys, we have like 700,000. So, um, let's just jump to, let's do, let's jump to like a hundred thousand or whatever's close to that. So hundred thousand, 125. So let me do, and again, I'll put this model up 100,000, 125. I'll put this model up on Python program net. It is 500 megabytes of a model. It's quite a large model. So, um, just take that in consideration, but you could run it off a CPU you know, running live on a CPU is really no big deal. It's mostly just training on a CPU that's uh, a pain in the butt. Uh, okay, so let's run this one. 
Okay, so here we have uh, this one still was 0% accurate. Uh, we can see that this one, it just got way, way, way wrong. But a lot of these are actually pretty close and you gotta kinda hand it to the model to an extent. Um, these are really long decimals. <laughs> so, so yeah, but you can already tell that it is at least getting in the ballpark. You know, 170,600 versus 170,400. Um, over here, 208, well, I think it's like 2 million, right? Am I blind? No, it's about 2 million something. And then this one is, again, about 2 million something. Um, so if this this AI was on a multiple choice test, it probably would do okay. <laughs> um, and yeah, so 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 at least it's, it's, it's getting there. It's getting closer to things, right? Um, and then let's just go ahead and jump it uh, all the way to the latest, which is 722.125. So 722. Make it nice and big here. Okay, so in this case, after this, it was 0 0.1. I forget if I round it. Do I actually round it possibly correct? No. It's not really rounded. So at least in this case, it was only 1%. And then like the best it's ever got is like 1.2. Not a huge difference. Um, but anyway, we can already see here, I forget which ones, which one it was historically that seemed to always get the magnitude wrong. It was one of these shorter, one of these ones down here. Uh, well, this one looks pretty bad. Anyway, we can continue to kind of like look at some of these and, and you, you should just be able to see, but also if we look back at the, I'll pull it back up here in a minute, but the, the tensor board log of the differences and all that, like it gets pretty good. I mean, it, it's pretty shocking to me that over time it's able to, to slowly hone in. Um, I'm not really sure, you know, that first of all, this model has been training for a week at least on paper space. Um, so... So I'm probably going to stop it at some point. Um, it's a costly, costly endeavor. Um, but I've already dropped the learning rate quite a bit. I'm not really sure I want to keep dropping it. But at the same time, it is. it does appear to me to continue to keep learning. And I, I'd really like to see how far we could take this model. So we'll see. But I don't think that, like, I don't think we're going to suddenly jump up to above 5%. So I think the next step is to come up with a superior model that will learn quicker than this one does so like in the first let's say 10,000 or 100,000 steps is it is it has it made more progress in this model if so I'll let that one continue and we'll see where we can get it so um, anyway that's kind of my plan going forward but it takes such a long time to keep playing around with these models so I'm just gonna kind of keep playing with them I probably won't make a update video every time I poke around um, and in the meantime we're gonna probably jump into a different topic entirely I'd like to play around with sound. So there's all kinds of fun things that we can do with generating sound. Uh, so that's kind of what I'm gonna be looking into next. If you guys have any suggestions about what kind of model size and shape and stuff that we should use here, um, by all means make the suggestion. This is also a bi-directional neural network. I don't know if that's actually beneficial <laughs> for us to be doing. So could try to take that away. Uh, let me just pull up the settings for this one real quick. Um, set up settings. So yeah, the vocab size 18, test size 500. These were the epochs that I set up here. Um, yeah, so in this case, it's a 10 by 512. So quite the large model. It might even be the case that 10 by 512 is too big. So a lot of times you make the model too big, it's just too challenging to actually learn. So probably the next step I would do is actually shrink the size of the network and see if that helps us at all. Um, so that's probably the first thing that I'm gonna actually do. But anyway, I'm actually pretty excited about this result. I think that's really cool. Uh, that it's capable of learning um, a pretty complex, like, there's not a direct, like, relate, there's so much going on in the input to this, and that it can slowly actually get more and more accurate, um, especially given the fact that we have so many inputs and so many plausible outputs, especially, like, the number of combinations that you could have here, um, it can't be brute force, right? And so, so the fact that it can actually learn um, this style of math is very intriguing. I, I, 
that's cool. I mean, I just, I just think that's really cool. And I think it would be super cool if you could get a hundred percent accuracy out of it <laughs> or even like 50%. I'd be like ecstatic with finding a model that could get even like 50% accuracy on this kind of an equation. That'd be pretty cool. And then eventually if I can get a good math model going, I'd like to start playing around with weaker forms of encryption and just see one can a neural network reliably do encryption like to like make a hash or something like that that you could actually rely on uh and then also could it break um less strong forms of encryption or hashes anyway that's it for now if you guys have suggestions i doubt anybody else is running one of these models but if you do and you happen to find something that's a little more accurate let me know uh, Anyways, that's it for now. Hope you guys have enjoyed. Like I said, we're probably going to get into sound and stuff like that next. That way more people could hopefully follow along. I just think this one uh, is clearly a very challenging task for a neural network, whereas with sound, uh, we can definitely get more into something that everybody can do on their computer as well. So anyways, that's what we're going to be doing in the coming tutorials. Hope you guys are enjoying the series. I'm having a good time making it. Uh, questions, comments, concerns, whatever, feel free to leave them below. If you like the content, you want to support the channel, this is my full-time job. You can do so at pythonprogramming.net slash support. Otherwise, I will see you in another video.